Major breaking news in Pittsburgh. A hospital shooting. We have several people shot inside Western Psych. Lives have been lost. Police have surrounded buildings in Oakland. Schools and colleges nearby are under lockdown. A very scary situation. We're talking to people caught in the middle of it all. Breaking news coverage you can count on right now at 5. Live, local, late breaking. Channel 11 News starts with breaking news. Oakland under siege, a gunman opened fire inside Western Psych this afternoon. A police officer is among the wounded this evening. Police now believe there was just one single gunman. And now that suspect is dead. Here's the very latest for you. At least nine people shot. Two of them are dead including the suspect. An officer was heard grazed by a bullet. Western Psych, the nearby University of Pittsburgh and other schools are under lockdown or were under lockdown. This all began inside Western Psych in Oakland and it has blocked off nearby streets and created terror for people working and living in that area. We have several reporters who have been breaking into programming with us all day, giving you the very latest. We begin our coverage with Rick Earl, who's live right at the scene there, Rick. Well, Peggy, it was a very tense situation here earlier today. When I arrived on the scene, police officers were telling us to get back, to stay back. They suspected there might be another shooter on the loose. Turns out there was not. There was only one shooter involved here at this point, and that shooter is now dead. Of course, a total of nine people shot, seven people uh, wounded and are now being treated at Presbyterian Hospital. Two people are dead. Two of the nine are dead, including the shooter. We don't know much about the other person who was shot and killed. We are working to learn details about that. It is a very active scene here now. Uh, there are police surrounding this entire area. You're looking at some video that we shot earlier today as police swarmed this scene. There were reports, earlier reports, police thought there might be a hostage situation. They swarmed this area. It turned out not to be a hostage situation. That was indeed good news here. They also had a number of reports that there may have been as many as two to three gunmen in this area. It turns out that was not the case. There was only one shooter, and that shooter is dead. We have learned, though, that that shooter apparently died in an exchange of gunfire with a University of Pittsburgh police officer, a Pittsburgh police officer engaging the shooter in gunfire and fatally uh, killing him inside Western Psych here earlier today. We understand that one Pitt police officer, University of Pitt police officer, was indeed uh, wounded uh, by a shot. He was apparently grazed in the leg. Again, at this hour, seven people are being treated at nearby Presbyterian Hospital for wounds suffered during this shooting. We are hoping to learn much more. Uh, police have told us they are planning a news conference here at UPMC sometime uh, within the next couple of hours. As Of course, when we get that information, we will pass it directly along to you. Again, uh, it was a very tense situation here earlier, but police are now standing down and uh, some folks here on the left, uh, to the left of me, have now been allowed to leave their building. It was a school of public health here. They were in lockdown as much of this area was this afternoon in lockdown along with the University of Pittsburgh. They have now been given the all clear and allowed to leave this area. That is the very latest reporting live in Oakland. Rick Earl, Channel 11 News. And Chopper 11 live over Oakland. Police are now going room to room, floor to floor at Western Psych to make sure everyone is safe. And we want to let you see now the text alert that was sent to students and employees at Pitt this afternoon. It warns of the shooter and talks about the lockdown and says if safe to do so, tell others about this message. Channel 11's Kara Sapita found a CMU student who was worried about someone at Western Psych. Kara joins us live now to continue our live Team 11 coverage. Kara. Darius, I want to say that a lot of buildings right now are on a modified lockdown, meaning you can leave if you want to, but one Pittsburgh public school remains on a mandatory lockdown right now. Students grade 6 through 12 who go here to Pittsburgh Science and Technology Academy. That's just one block over from Western Psych. I just talked to school officials, and at this point, they are going to remain on lockdown for the time being. Now, again, we are one block over from where Western Psych is and from where UPMC Presby is and where we spent the last few hours talking to people. At that point, we tried to get into one of those buildings that were locked down, and they wouldn't let us in without official press credentials, and that wasn't a guard 
watching that door. That was just petrified students at the time. On the TV in the lobby, it said that they were under an emergency building lockdown. Frightened students and administrators were just glued to the windows because, of course, at that point, everybody, including us, we were still under the impression there could be a second shooter out there. One person looking in that window, a man whose wife works at Western Psych, called him saying that she heard gunfire. She walked out of her office, saw a person down on the ground, saw blood around that person, ran back in and called her husband, thinking that it had been over. That's when police came and decided to escort everybody in that room somewhere else because they thought there was a second shooter. We walked down the street and we found a CMU student who arrived wondering where his sister was. She works in Western Psych. She wasn't answering her phone. Take a listen. Um, well, both my sisters actually work there. So uh, I, I called them and I got a hold of one. She's off today. And uh, I don't know about the other ones. So. I think my sister's going to try and find out the one that's off today because she has more contacts. Uh, good news to report here just a second ago. The man that I was talking about that was glued to the window waiting to hear from his wife in Western Psych. He just walked past saying that his wife was OK. Uh, one more little nugget that I wanted to tell you some perspective here earlier when we were standing right in front of the caution tape. One of the officers who was standing there, I said to him, what have you heard about this second shooter? Anything at this point? He looked at me and he said, I wouldn't be standing out here if I wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest if I was you. And next to him were two men in FBI bulletproof vest jacket. So that's the very latest out here. I'm Kara Sapida, Channel 11 News. And Channel 11's Jodine Costanzo has been talking to those caught in the middle of this very scary situation in Oakland. Jodine. Well, Peggy, I have been out here all afternoon and I can tell you I've seen so many people visibly shaken, visibly upset, very, very frightened. I describe it as sheer pandemonium. I've seen people just running from the scene, not really knowing what was going on, a lot of uncertainty, uh, but more and more people just leaving the area, told to leave by police as more and more uh, SWAT teams and police come into the area. Now, UPMC Presbyterian was shut down, was put on lockdown just for about 15 minutes this afternoon, and I did talk with a man who was there for a job interview. Here's what he had to say. So we didn't know where it was going. We didn't actually know where this, where this actually all took place at. We didn't actually know if it was outside of the hospital. And we decided to all just stay in there because everyone there actually in there was upset. They didn't know what to do. The few people and uh, a lot of emotion and crying and whatnot. That's right. A lot of people crying, very emotional. Again, a lot of people not at the time really knowing what was going on. Now, UPMC Presbyterian again was shut down uh, on lockdown just for about 10 to 15 minutes today. That's reopened, but all of the pit campus, all of the school buildings shut down on lockdown. Uh, students and faculty told to go home to evacuate the area. Now, Pittsburgh police are expected to hold a news briefing, a news conference anytime now. I am headed over there and uh, hope to bring you the very latest as we get it. Back to you in the studio. All right, Jodine, and right after we first heard about the shooting, viewers started sending us pictures from the chaotic scene. Here you can see police officers escorting people out of a nearby building. You can also see they're directing the people away from the scene very calmly, I might add. Someone from inside an office building sent us this picture of the scene. You can see numerous police and SWAT vehicles there along the street. And from the ground, you can see just how active the scene was. Numerous police cars were there with flashing lights. Right now, we want to get you caught up on the details of this breaking story. So nine people have been shot, two are dead, including the shooter who opened fire inside Western Psych just before 2 o'clock this afternoon. We're told an officer, a pit officer, was grazed by a bullet. Several nearby schools and hospitals were forced into lockdown after the shooting. Sources say the shooter was shot and killed by that University of Pittsburgh police officer. Pittsburgh police are asking everyone to stay away from the Oakland area. Stay with Channel 11 News as this breaking story continues to develop. We'll have updates on the hospital shooting every 15 minutes during our next 90 minutes of news. And we're posting the latest details on our website at WPXI.com. In addition to our breaking news, we are, of course, keeping an eye on the weather. Rain heavy at times has been falling much of today. There is a chance of some rumbles of thunder. And there's more rain on the radar. Meteorologist Scott Harbaugh shows us what he's been tracking for us tonight. Scott? Yeah, quite a bit of rain beginning to break up across the area, becoming a little more scattered with storm tracker Doppler 11 radar. Scanning the skies with a million watts of power. You can see the rain 
cutting through the area. There is still more back to the west. The cold front extends from Cleveland down to about Cincinnati right now. Once the cold front makes it through, rain will shut off. Temperatures right now across the area still very mild, mainly in the 50s across the region. 55 in Pittsburgh right now. Indiana 54 as we head through the evening will fall into the 40s. Occasional showers and a much cooler day tomorrow, plus a decent looking weekend forecast. Details coming up in just about 10 minutes. All right, Scott, thank you. Now on to some local coverage of stories we've been following. Police arrest a woman they say hit her boyfriend with a car. It happened around 930 this morning on the off ramp of Route 65 near California Avenue in the city's Marshall Shadeland neighborhood. Investigators say the couple was in the car when the man tried to jump out, but apparently went up over the hood. The man did appear to be okay. So far, police are not releasing the woman's name. Texting and driving is now against the law in Pennsylvania. The new law includes wireless phones, PDAs, smartphones, and portable mobile computers. If you are caught using one while behind the wheel, it'll cost you $50 and even more when you include your court cost. Moon Township Police say they haven't caught anyone violating the new law just yet, but officers say they know what they're looking for. Our officers will be out there uh, on their normal patrol today, and um, they're aware of the law. Well, texting is illegal. You can still talk on your phone. Police say a local man charged more than <coughs> $1,400 in sex line calls to a Westmoreland County church. The pastor at Zion Evang Evangelical Church wrote Keith Jenkins a $40 check made out to Walmart because Jenkins told him he needed the money for baby formula. Jenkins allegedly cashed that check at Walmart and used its routing number to set up an account with a sex chat line. Today, a judge ordered Jenkins to stand trial. A gun scare when a Moon Township elementary student brings a pellet gun to the bus stop. This is a picture of the pellet gun police officers found. You can see the pellet gun looks very much like a real handgun. The school district says the Hyde elementary student will be disciplined. No one was hurt. Students evacuated after a threat was discovered at Greensburg Salem High School. This happened around one this afternoon. We got to the scene just as many of those students were leaving on a school bus. Police officers searched the school. No word on whether they found anything suspicious. And Ross Township police are looking into a threat found at North Hills Junior High School. Our partners at the Trib report the threat was discovered on a bathroom wall. The junior and high school were evacuated around 9 this morning. Students went back to class when officers and search dogs didn't find anything suspicious. A bad break leaves a big mess in Beaver County this morning. A viewer sent us this picture of the water main break on Broadhead Road in Center Township. You can see the water just shooting right into the air there. When we got there, crews were busy making repairs to the 8-inch line. A neighbor tells us they did temporarily lose water service. Repar repairs are expected to be completed by early this afternoon. New details on a fire that destroyed a landmark restaurant. Greasy towels lying on top of a dryer are now being blamed for the fire last month at the Winchester Room in North for Sales. From Chopper 11, you can see how quickly that blaze spread. The owner has demolished what the flames didn't destroy, but he tells our partners at the McKeesport Daily News he will rebuild. Our breaking news coverage continues now of the mass shooting at Western Psych. We are still waiting to find out when there will be a police news conference about the shooting there this afternoon. Here are some of the latest details, though, that we have. The shootings happened just before 2 o'clock this afternoon at Western Psychiatric Institute and Clinic in Oakland. Nine people in all were shot. Two of those people are dead. One of them is the gunman. He is among the dead. Police have been going floor to floor to make sure the building is clear. An update on the lockdown of the Pittsburgh Science and Technology Academy. They just sent out a message about a half an hour ago saying that the school is still in lockdown and that all of the students there are safe. Bathroom breaks, drinks and food have been coordinated for all of the students. School buses are there and the students will be dismissed when the situation is clear and safe for everyone. Channel 11's Rick Earl is live at the scene. Rick. Well, Peggy, let me set the scene for you right now. I want to show you if you turn to my left, uh, you can see photographer Paul Filing showing you a shot. That is the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Graduate School of Public Health. Those people were in lockdown since 2 o'clock this afternoon. They are just being allowed to leave their building. Spoke to us, several of them. They said the, the doors automatically locked shortly after the shooting occurred. Now, the shooting happened at Western Psych, which is about a block up 
from the School of Public Health, Paul Filing, showing you the Western Psych building. That is the yellow brick building, that six or seven story brick building. And that is where all the activity happened here this afternoon, right around two o'clock. A gunman uh, opened fire inside Western Psych. A total of nine people were shot. Two of them dead among the dead is the shooter. He was brought down in an exchange of gunfire with the University of Pittsburgh police officer. Now at this moment, right across the street, to the left of the uh, Western Psych is UPMC Presbyterian. That's where the seven wounded people are now being treated. Uh, it's unclear at this point the extent of the injuries, but seven people wounded in this shooting are now being treated at UPMC. We are expecting a news conference sometime soon with Pittsburgh police as well as UPMC to address what happened here this afternoon as well as the extent of those wounded today. And you can see a live picture. Police have this area surrounded. They have blocked off the streets, a two block area around Western Psych, which sits just below the Peterson Event Center, and police have this area surrounded. They have been here all afternoon. Of course, earlier there were some thoughts that there may have been uh, another shooter, possibly even two more shooters involved in this incident. That turned out not to be the case. That was good news for Pittsburgh police here. And they also had some reports from people inside Western Psych that uh, they were allegedly being held hostage by gunmen. Police went in and determined that was not the case either. But again, total of nine people shot, two of of them dead, fatally shot. Uh, one of the dead, the gunman here who opened fire, we understand he was brought down in an exchange of gunfire with a University of Pittsburgh police officer, a Pittsburgh police officer, a University of Pittsburgh police officer who was also at that time apparently grazed by a bullet in the exchange of gunfire. Again, seven people now being treated at UPMC Presbyterian. That is the very latest. Back to you guys. Derry. All right, and a hotline has been set up for any people who have been affected by today's shooting. They can call 412-623-7724. And I, I believe this is for people who were in uh, Western Psych or who have somebody who is in Western Psych or somebody who is working in that area or perhaps they left something in that building when they were forced to evacuate after this shooting took place. We've also learned, I'm looking at our assigned file here, Darius, and there will be, I guess at 6 o'clock, city officials are going to be holding a press briefing uh, on the Western Psych incident at 6 o'clock tonight, that from uh, the mayor's office. Yeah, and we understand that the mayor has been on the scene since this began, uh, sometime around 2 o'clock. He responded very early on, and uh, he's been there working with the Pittsburgh Police Department along with the University of Pittsburgh Police. So as uh, those entities come together, this news conference uh, certainly may ha happen at about 6 o'clock. We want to take you back out live now to Kara Sapita, who's been on the scene uh, since this afternoon. Kara? Uh, Chief Nate Harper just arrived here on scene. He said he has no update right yet. In about 45 minutes, he'll be ready to brief the media. That's him right now walking toward Western Psych. If you're looking for any loved ones, they're being escorted to Peterson Event Center. Sirens are pretty relentless out here. For the last hour, that SWAT team had been going floor to floor along with the FBI. And then just recently, UPMC finally released a piece of information, the first official piece of information all afternoon, saying that the shooter is believed to be dead, as you've heard, but the heightened fears out here really came because solid two hours, police were still working to confirm whether there was a second shooter. One of the texts that I got from an officer said right now they're only clearing civilians right now. All patients are remaining on lockdown because they have no way of knowing which patients are violent versus those who are not. Just to give you some perspective of what it was like as they were going floor to floor inside of Western Psych. Now, if we can just shoot right up here, Pittsburgh Science and Technology Academy is the only Pittsburgh school still on lockdown. However, a couple of school buses just pulled up. I did talk to Ebony Pugh over at the administration building, and she says that all of the students are doing well in there. They have snacks. They're being taken care of. They're, it is not a frightening scene on the inside there, but it's just one block away. And again, as I mentioned, the sirens are just relentless out here, and they have been throughout the afternoon. Um, we're going to go try to talk to Chief Nate Harper again. He just arrived here on scene, and we'll touch base with you guys in just a few minutes. Reporting live in Oakland, Kara Sapida, Channel 11 News. All right, Kara, thank you so much. Kara Sapida has been out there. We understand Tamika Artist is working mm -hmm. uh, an, an area down in Oakland. Rick Earl, as you've seen, is out there as well. Um, and we continue with Jodine Costanzo um, at a different location. I understand she may be headed over to that press conference that we hope begins at 6 o'clock for you. 
And that uh, press conference will be coming from the city. We have not heard from UPMC yet uh, about the extent of those um, injuries. We have seven people being treated. We really don't know how seriously they were wounded, uh, but we do have some information uh, from an employee at UPMC who wanted to know if they should report for work tonight, and UPMC is saying yes report for work as usual. Yeah, and they did issue a statement earlier that we read. Uh, it did not give us any details about those people who had been injured. It obviously just stated the facts that we have been telling you. Um, but they, of course, are busy treating these injured people. And as soon as uh, we get some details on the injured, we will certainly let you know. And I just want to tell people again the number to call if you have somebody uh, who is unaccounted for, if you have uh, somebody who was working downtown, somebody who is, excuse me, not downtown, in Oakland who was on lockdown and you're worried about him, if you happen to be in that building and you left something in that building, you can call 412 623 7724 again for people who uh, were visiting uh, Western Psych when this happened. For the most part, we understand that that many of the schools, with the exception of the one that we just mentioned, um, have released their lockdowns, and a lot of the students uh, at nearby schools, including um, Central Catholic, Carlo, those students have, uh, uh, in many instances, perhaps even made it home. Um, they are out of school and or out of the lockdown or trying to make their way home. We showed you pictures from Chopper 11 Live uh, just a short time ago, and it is gridlock in, in Oakland. Many streets still shut down. That is the case normally at, at 519 for yeah. Oakland, but of course with at so a many tragedy, things. tragedy, a drama like this one. And, and then the yeah. rain, and of course it's going to be slow moving. So you may have people who are waiting to come home. Do not go into the Oakland area. We have said that over and over throughout the afternoon. This coming from the Pittsburgh Police Department, letting people know, don't come in, allow people to come out. Absolutely. We want to give you a look at the scene now from the perspective of some of the people who are right in the middle of it. This is a picture uh, that um, viewers have sent us. And by the way, if you have pictures that you've taken with your cell phone or video, please do send them our way. This shows the, the heavy presence down there. You see the uh, police cars arriving at the scene. I believe that shot was just when this incident started, just before 2 o'clock this afternoon. And we showed you earlier this picture, but we want to show it to you again. This being from someone who was on the ground and was able to take a picture from the hospital entrance. And uh, if we're able to show you that, it gives you a better indication as to uh, the number of police cars that were arriving. There it is. And and obviously the response in effect with the, the lights from the um, cars as well as from the emergency vehicles vehicles who were responding. Well, it's hard to talk about anything else today. It's certainly what is on everybody's mind, and people are uh, hoping for the best outcome for those seven people who are being treated at hospitals right now. But we do have a weather situation outside. Yeah, of course, it's of raining. all days for it to begin raining with heavy rain today. We have had uh, some rain on and off in the Pittsburgh area, and let's turn things over now to Scott Harbaugh. Scott? Yeah, kind of been a soggy day today, especially since about 10 o'clock this morning. Storm tracker Doppler 11 radar still showing rain across the area. Notice the breaks in the rain will continue to break this apart as we head through the evening hours tonight in Allegheny County. Just some light showers, western part of the county, Coriopolis, Swickley into Beaver County. Notice that heavier line of rain from about Franklin down through Newcastle. That's actually the cold front that's going to be coming through the area. Once this comes through, rain will begin to taper off later tonight. And with that, much colder air is on the way. So here's what we're tracking for you. Rain ends tonight. The breeze sticks around during the day tomorrow, but only 40s for high temperatures tomorrow. We're in the 50s right now. 55 in Pittsburgh, 54 degrees in Butler, Franklin at 52. But as we head through the evening, temperature is going to drop into the low 40s. Rain shuts off by about 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. Here it is on Storm Tracker, 7 o'clock this evening. The scattered showers noticed by 10 o'clock, most of it east of Pittsburgh and pretty much calms down by first thing tomorrow morning. So your forecast from Severe Weather Center 11 showers ending this evening, then turning much colder 31 by first thing tomorrow morning. So keep in mind a couple of the outline areas could have a little bit of black ice late tonight in first thing tomorrow morning. Tomorrow more clouds and sunshine. I think we start off with a little sun clouds thicken up might even be a flurry east of Pittsburgh or north of Pittsburgh tomorrow 43 for the high temperature and Kind of breezy, your five-day forecast with your weekend always in view. Sunshine on Saturday, 43. How about Sunday? Back up to 61. 
Great way to close out the weekend. Monday and Tuesday, scattered showers and highs in the 60s. That's your latest forecast from Severe Weather Center 11. All right, thanks so much. We want to take you back out live now to Rick Earl, who is on the scene and has been there for most of the afternoon. Rick? Yeah, that's right, uh, Derry. Joining me live right now is Beth. Uh, she works here in the school, of, the Graduate School of Public Health. That building was in lockdown for several hours this afternoon, and you were just allowed to leave. Tell me uh, what happened. Well, actually, we weren't allowed to leave. We were told to leave. And uh, it started a few hours ago, and Everybody comes running down the hall saying, oh, there's been shootings and this, that, and the other. And we go up to the other end of the uh, hallway to the Crabtree side to look out the windows. And it's all, you know, cop cars and everything. They're bringing people out on gurneys. They're bringing people out and escorting them over to Presby. And, and then the dean ordered everybody away from the windows. And so... We were locked down and now we were ordered to leave by the police. When you were watching that unfolding before your eyes, what, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind at that point? First off, how did guns get into the Western Psych Institute to begin with, especially two guys with guns? I think they say now just one person with a gun. That's it. Really? They, they initially thought it may have been two or three, but now they're saying just they believe just one person. And they believe the shooter is among the dead. There were nine people total in total yeah. shot. Two oh, people geez. are dead, seven wounded. Among the dead is the, the one the shooter. shooter. Yeah. Last I heard, there were five. Yeah. yeah. But, oh my God, what, what, what a tragedy. Just thank God that the students were off on break this week because there would have been so many more people in there. Yeah, what is the security situation at Western Psych? Do they have any security there? That I really don't know. I know that the patient floors are locked down. You, you have to have an ID and stuff to get on the floors. And if you're coming in to visit somebody, you have to be a let in. But just getting in the front door, there is basically not a lot. There's a desk person. And you were in the building just below Western Psych. Um, right. What did you do for the uh, two or three hours that you were in lockdown? I still worked. <laughs> that doesn't end. Right. Is that what most people were doing? What was the attitude in there? What was the mood a lot of, of people? A lot of people were basically very concerned. They were discussing things. They were in the hall. They were visiting back and forth, you know, comforting each other trying to make sense of what was going on and there's not a lot of sense to be made uh, a person who left uh, the school of public health where you work a secretary we spoke with earlier said that the doors in your building locked Automatic immediately yeah, yeah, automatically that, that okay. yeah it's yeah. an automatic lockdown system especially in case of fire so they also have control in dangerous situations like this did anyone come in and tell you what was going on or did you guys just gather? Did you, were you watching television, listening to the radio? How did you find out what was happening? Well, a lot of it, like I said before, somebody from the other end came down, told us there was a shooting over there, and then the word spread. And it got to the point after a couple of hours where the dean actually came over the intercon system and said, you know, there has been a shooting, uh, and, you know, we are locked down. And then it was a while later but when he came back and said they're asking us to leave. Beth, we're glad you're okay. Thank you for speaking with us. We certainly appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll send it back to you guys now. Interesting that, you know, she didn't even know the updated information because they were on lockdown. And as far as she knew, there was still two shooters yeah, out and there. She wasn't sure of the number of people who, were, who were, had been injured. But, of course, uh, she's out along with everyone else, and they're now getting the updated information. Our continuing live coverage of this very tragic situation in Oakland continues right after this break. Stay with us. Live, local, late breaking. Channel 11 News starts with breaking news. Continuing coverage now of a hospital shooting. Two people are dead, several others hurt after a gunman opens fire inside Western Psych. That gunfire broke out a, around 2 o'clock this afternoon. New information has been pouring into our newsroom, and here is the very latest. Two people were killed, including the gunman who was shot, we're told, by a University of Pittsburgh police officer. We're also told that the officer may have been grazed in the leg. He is one of seven others that were wounded. The shooting put several schools, including Pitt, on lockdown, and that lockdown has since been lifted. We have several reporters who have been breaking into programming with us all day. Let's begin now, live in Oakland with Channel 11's Rick Earl. Rick. 
Well, Darius, the Allegheny County coroner arrived here just a short time ago, and he's telling us again that, you know, two people are dead here inside Western Psych. Uh, among those two people, the shooter, who was apparently uh, engaged in gunfire with a University of Pittsburgh police officer when he was shot and killed, that University of Pittsburgh police officer received a graze, a bullet graze to the leg 